Hey friends, today I want to talk about collaboration. Collaboration is extremely powerful for you as an artist because when you work with another artist, they do things slightly different than you and maybe you could you could stand to learn something. There's also a great benefit to being able to reach their fans with your music and for them to be able to reach your fans. It's a way to cultivate community. Um, but I think that it's it can be a very frustrating situation for artists um, because how many times have you tried to collaborate with somebody and you go to open the files on your computer and there are files missing or you send them files and they can't open files because they're missing today i want to try to tackle that so what i have here is i have this um some audio data and some midi and i've got this little uh collaboration that i'm working on with an artist uh, with a friend of mine and i want to go over the first method of collaboration and that's just simply exporting stems okay and what exporting stems can do for you is it doesn't matter what DAW you're using. If I export these stems and I, I, I put them on the internet and that other person can download those stems, all they have to do is lay those stems on top of each other and they'll just have audio information, okay? So they could you could be using Ableton Live, they could be using Pro Tools, they could be using uh, Logic, uh, so on and so forth, Cubase, it doesn't matter. I can go up to the top of Ableton when I go to my export dialog, okay? Let's just take a look at this real quick. A lot of people don't realize that this is a, actually a drop-down menu. The rendered track is a drop-down menu. You can actually choose which files you want to um, export, okay? So if I just go to all individual tracks, what Ableton is going to do is it's going to, it's going to export each one of those tracks, okay? Um, and it's even going to export the reverb send. And so let's go ahead and listen to what's what's going on here. In the in the first track I have a guitar track. Nothing really going on, just a little bit of panning. Now in the second track though, as you can see, I'm sending effect to this reverb, okay? This reverb return is very important. It's it's part of it's part of my composition as as well as this Rhodes track. Okay, so that needs to be part of my export process. So this, the most simple way to do this is to just go to File, Export, okay? And then we're gonna choose all individual tracks. So you also wanna make sure that the time is right. So I'm going from bar one all the way up to, to the end of uh, bar 24, and that's gonna capture everything, okay? So now I'm gonna hit the Export button. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna ask me, where do you wanna put this? So I'm gonna go to my EarthCry folder. I'm gonna scroll down to the name of this song, which is Five Skies. And I already have a folder that I've named Five Skies Stems, okay? So you can create a folder, call it the stems of whatever track you're working on and hit save. Now watch what happens. It's going to render the audio for each one of these tracks and it's gonna spit them out. It's also going to name the files based on the names that are on the tracks, okay? So let's watch, let's, let's, let's find out what happens when this is done. All right, so we've finished exporting, and you might find that your export takes longer. It probably will. This is a very short idea, all right? But I'm going in here, and I'm at five skies, and what I, ha what I have here is I have each one of these tracks, and my computer has made them go in alphabetical order, but you can see it names the name of the set first, and then it names the name of the track, okay? So all of these individual files are now in audio form, even though these we're in MIDI. So let's talk a little bit about why there's why this this is there's an advantage to this. Now the other person can go into their DAW, whatever it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and save this. They can go into their DAW and they can they can enter into uh, you know their arrangement view, whatever it is, and they can just take these tracks and drag them into their DAW, and boom, they have all the information at least in an audio way to collaborate with you. They can mix, they can make changes, so on and so forth, forever, all right? And this is going to be a situation where you're never gonna run into, you know, computer B does not have the thing that computer A has. And then they can, once they're done editing some of this stuff, they've added some parts, they can go ahead, maybe they've even added some tracks, okay? They can go ahead and name those tracks. Let's say this ended up being, um, you know, SFX, and this one ended up being vocals so on and so forth, they can go ahead and go, when they go to export, they can go to export audio video, and they can choose all individual tracks and then export it back to you, okay? 
So nothing is lost. You still have your reverb send from the original, okay? Maybe that's not the reverb that you want to keep, but you still have nothing is lost, okay? So that is the first method of collaboration. You've liberated yourself from Ableton's file system. You are using simply just sharing a folder of tracks back and forth, okay? Now that is advantageous because you can also use any DAW. You know, somebody could be using Cubase and you could be using Ableton and you can go back and forth forever, okay? So now let's talk about another form of collaboration, okay? I'm going to go back to the original uh, set here. And let's talk about using Ableton together. If somebody else has Ableton and you have Ableton, let's talk about that collaboration, okay? So in this situation, if I were to go and export this, or I was going to go and just save the live set, all right? If I hit save live set, and I go on my computer, and I grab this Five Skies project folder, and contained in this folder, let's not worry about the stems from now, because these stems wouldn't have been created, okay? I'm going to go ahead and actually just delete these. Now, if I just share this folder with somebody else, I'm making a couple assumptions. The first assumption is that this file is going to open in their Ableton. Now, the first thing you need to know is that if you make this in Ableton 10 and the collaboration partner you have is using Ableton 9, it will not even open, okay? It is so important to know this. Ableton does not, if you make something in a newer version of Ableton, it won't open in an old one. Now, let's say you made it in Ableton 9, though, okay? You made something in Ableton 9. Someone with Ableton 10 can open that file, but the, the, the trouble is, is that once they save that file, you can no longer open it in Ableton 9. I think one of the most important things to do is to decide what version of Ableton you both want to use and stick with it. And I'm not just talking about Ableton 9 or 10. I'm talking about Ableton 9.5.7 or something. It, having the exact same version of Ableton Live is going to help you avoid a lot of problems in the future, okay? Which is really, in, in a lot of ways, staying up with the most updated version of Ableton Live will not only get all the, uh, the errors fixed, it's just going to make your life easier, and collaboration is going to be a lot easier as well. Let's talk about, let's, let's make the assumption that you have exactly the same version of Ableton Live and you want to share your session files, okay? So in this case, let's talk about what will work and what won't work, okay? And the assumptions that you're making. In track one, there's, when I double click on the track, there's nothing in there. It's just audio, okay? Raw guitar. In track two, we have raw guitar. But as you can hear, it's being also being sent to a reverb. Now, this reverb is an Ableton device, okay? If you have the same version of Ableton Live, both computers are going to open this reverb, all right? And it's going to work out just fine, okay? So that's not necessarily a problem. In this track, we have a Ableton's um, electric making a Rhodes sound. And it's also being sent to the reverb. So these are also Ableton devices. No problem if you have the same version of Ableton. Now we're going to run into problems. Here I have an upright bass track. And I'm using Native Instruments Contact 5 to make the bass track. And I'm using um, Sound Toys Decapitator to, to add a little bit of saturation. So, here's, here's where we run into issues. If you have this version, okay, if you have this, this version of Ableton Live, and it, that's fine, everything's working there, you may not have the same version of contact, and that's where things can, can get to be a big problem. So let's say you even have the, uh, the, the factory library, but you don't have exactly the same version, even if you have the same version of live. This isn't going to open properly. Also, just, just as an aside, for Native Instruments um, in general, the file system in Native Instruments is so complicated that if your user library isn't in the same place on the computer, you're going to run into all kinds of issues. So I've never really had a successful situation sharing contact files. So, so what's the move? Okay, let's think about what the move is. In this situation... All right. If you want to collaborate using Ableton Live and you want to keep some of these parts discrete, what I would do is to go ahead and freeze the track. Okay. So what does freezing do? What freezing does is it creates an audio file. What it's doing is it's creating an audio file to play over top of the plugins. And later on, Let's say I send this over to the other guy. He can now listen to it because the track is frozen, okay? What I can do later on with his version that he sent back to me is unfreeze this track, and since I have the plugins, I can go ahead and change some things, all right? 
But if you leave this frozen, then he can open this as an individual track, okay? Now, here's the final track here, and we have a situation where we have contact, we have a UAD plugin, and an Ableton compressor. So we have a combination of external plugins and internal plugins. What I can do here is I can also freeze the track. And what I'm doing is, again, I'm writing an audio file. So you could think of it almost like as a, as a, as a blanket or a layer. The, the other person you're collaborating with will be able to hear this, okay? And, but they just won't be able to go in and edit anything. And you don't want them to unfreeze it. Leave it frozen, okay? So that later, when you go back, when you open his version that he sends back to you, these will still remain frozen, and the, and the, the essential information will be retained, okay? So now, I'm ready to collaborate with my friend using Ableton Live. So the way that I would do this is I would go... Now, this is where, this is where mistakes happen every single time. Pay attention here. If I just go to save, okay, and I just take this one folder that I've made, and this folder is sitting in my, on my computer, we've got samples. And the samples are going, the processed and frozen samples are actually in here as well, okay? We've got frozen samples, we've got our recorded samples, such as the guitar, um, we've got some backups, and we've got the project info, okay? Now, if I just go and send this folder over to the other guy, I'm making some more assumptions, okay? The assumption is that he has everything that I have in my user library. He has everything that I have in terms of samples taken from different places. Let's say you've made a drum rack with a bunch of samples, okay? Let's say you've made, um, you know, just, just another instrument with, with Ableton in your user library, okay? What's very important that you need to understand here and a really good practice to do is to not even try to share files that way. This is the method. Go to save live set as, okay? This is a whole new process and put it on your desktop. Okay, we're going to save this live set as five skies underscore collab or something. Okay, hit enter. Now, if, they, if you try to share this, what will happen? What will happen is that there are no samples in this folder, right? That's not a good thing. There are no samples in this folder. So if you were to share this folder by itself, okay, there would be nothing in it. So when the person opens the file, there'll be nothing there. So how do we solve this issue? The next way to do this is you go to File, and then you go to Collect All and Save. All right. So what this does, I'm going to read the bottom. It says, Collects and Saves All External Media Files Referenced by the Current Set, including those from the library. All right. If you hit Collect All and Save, then what you have now is you have a dialog that comes up. It says, all right, am I going to collect files from elsewhere? Yes, because there are files somewhere else on my computer. All right, that are being assembled to make the set. A set, an Ableton set, is basically a map of your computer. Okay, it's mapping out the different places that it's drawing the media from. Okay, files from other projects. Yes, I want to use that just in case there are other projects that I'm using files from. Files from my user library. Absolutely. Okay. Now, if you're using the same version of Ableton Live, and what I mean by same version is not only is it Ableton, let's say it's ten point ten point zero point three, but it's also that you have the same like like version. So is it light, standard, or sweet, okay? It needs to be exactly the same. If it is not exactly the same, but you're using the same version, so Ableton 10, um, you'll want to also click yes here because the factory uh, packs might be slightly different, okay? So now that I've done this, when I hit okay, what will happen is it will copy the media from that one place. And now look, when I open this folder, we have the backups and we have the samples, okay? We have the processed frozen samples, and we have the recorded samples. And the, the, the joy and the, the, the awesome thing about this is that it did not copy the samples that we weren't using. It only copied the ones that we were using. So what did it do? It also made our set more efficient to send, okay? It's not going to be as big, all right? So now that we've got all that worked out, I'm ready to, to drop this into, you know, whatever, whatever, uh, you know, whatever, however you're going to transport the files, either it be at wetransfer.com or Google Drive or however you're going to collaborate, you're ready to do that, okay? So that is how you collaborate using Ableton. Um, now, if you have exactly the same computer, doing exactly the same, having exactly the same DAW with exactly the same plugins and all that other stuff, collaboration can get even deeper and you won't have to go through these steps. But I'm going to say 90 5% of you won't have that setup. So it's very important to 
understand the file system so that you don't have files lost, okay? Okay, so I know this video has been long, but I appreciate you checking it out, and this is going to make your collaborations a lot easier with, with other people in the future. And stay tuned for another video. I'm going to go over Splice, which is an even more awesome way to collaborate with somebody else using Ableton, um, but it's got kind of a different workflow, um, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you uh, got usage out of this video, and thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time.